Let us stand to receive the family. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he was dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth. He shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after the skin worm destroy my body, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself. And my eyes shall behold And not enough. But we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain that we can carry nothing out. The Lord has given. And the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Man that is born of a woman is of a few days full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days. What it is that I may know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as a span, and my age is nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Lord, thou hast been my dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, for even thou hast formed the earth. And the world from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and say, Return, ye children of men, for a thousand years in thy sight are but yesterday when it is past as a watch in the night. God is our refuge and our strength. Very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with swelling. Thereof. There's a river, a stream, whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right area. The heavens, the heathens reign. Kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. You may rest in the presence of the Lord. Come on, all over this room, clap those hands and give God praise all over this room. No, 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 they ain't going clap those hands and give God praise all over this room. Somebody open up your mouth and give God praise. Somebody open your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. I don't hear you. Somebody open your mouth and give God praise. Oh, give him praise. Give him praise. But well, he deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. He deserves the praise. Oh, we bless God for his goodness and his mercy towards us. We thank God for what he's doing, what he's going to do. Come this afternoon not necessarily to mourn the passing of sister, mother, Loretta, and young Darton. But we come to celebrate her life. Somebody come on, let's give God praise for her life. Y'all ain't working with me. Come on, give God praise for, for her life. Give God praise for her life. We come 
the gift of praise. Every good and every perfect gift comes from above. And so we give God praise for this good and this perfect gift. Amen. No, she wasn't a per perfect person, but she definitely was a perfect gift. And we give God praise for this perfect gift. Now before we move forward, there are a couple of housekeeping rules we'd like to take care of. Now please, ma'am, please, sir, if you have a cellular device, your cellular phone, please take your cellular device and put them in the vibrate position or either put them in the off position. Today we come to celebrate this great woman, this queen. Amen. And it's about her. It's not about you. That's right. Amen. That's right. So we come to celebrate her. We don't want to hear your ring talk. Come on. Come on. We know you're important, but we don't want to hear that today. We come to celebrate this queen. Let me share this with you. Uh, when I moved to the state of New Jersey, they told me to go to the airport to pick up my bishop. My first time going to Newark International Airport, didn't know where I was going. I got to the airport, it looked like it looks in here today. Cars were everywhere. I had to drive around and find me a park. When I found me a park, I got on the inside. When I got on the inside, I saw people everywhere. But I discovered everybody wasn't going anywhere. The majority of the people there was just there to see somebody off. And that's what we come today. We just come to see her off. And so we give God praise because God has been good to her. He has blessed her and he kept her all these years. And we come to celebrate the Lord for all these years. I put up with God the family. This has been a long, tedious week for this family. This family has labored. They labored this week. And so we come not to be a burden on them, but we come to bear the burden. Amen. And so by that I'm saying, please, ma'am, please, sir, be mindful of what you say. Because I've discovered some folk just don't know what to say. So please, ma'am, please, sir, be respectful to this family. And be mindful of what you say. The family has taken a sabbatical from their grief. And they have designed a program according to the way they wanted it. So I'm going to give this observation. I need you to hear me real good. If you do not see your name, do not move. <laughs> if you do not see your name. Do not move. But I know how some of us, we just get that option. We get that urge. We got to say something. We got to see. We got to do something. If you do, don't bother the family. Come straight to me. Don't bother the family. Come to me. And as politely as I can, I'll tell you, no. <laughs> so we're going to talk the program. One more time. One more time. Let's give God praise for the light. <laughs> woman and my mother has been friends for decades. They were friends for decades. And my mother on her sick bed, when she was on her sick bed, she had to call my mother at least once a week. My mother's voice was so weak, but when she would call, my mother would muster up strength from somewhere that her voice could be heard to talk to her friend, Loretta. Here's the, here's, here's the amazing thing. On February 26, one year ago, my mother transitioned. Loretta transitioned on the same day that my mother transitioned. And she's being funeralized on the same day that my mother was funeralized. And I give God praise for the friendship. She has been in our lives. She's been part of our family lives for years and years and years. Leah was small and thin back then. <laughs> They would come from Boston in the summertime. My, my house was behind their grandmother's house, and they could play with nobody but us. <laughs> and then, then they moved on Brandon Avenue, and my mother and father and their mother and father were the best of friends. They used to get together and dance together, and Jesse B would play this song called Ain't Gonna Bump No More <laughs> with no big fat woman. <laughs> <laughs> and so we bless God because we have wonderful 
wonderful, beautiful, wonderful memories that we will ponder for the rest of our days. Though she is no longer in our eyesight, she will always be in our heart. And not only that, she will always be in our head. We will always hear her voice and we will always cherish her and we will always love her. Do me one more favor, just one more time. Just clap your hands and give God praise. Come on, give me a see and give her a, a, a standing ovation. in this room, male and female creating he them. Every preacher in this room, please stop, please stand so the family can see that you came to support them. Every minister in this room, we give God praise. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir, for your support in this room. Every minister in this room, we give God praise for you. Amen. We do honor God for every bishop, every apostle, every minister, every evangelist, every whatever your title is. We give God praise for body, body, and every body. Amen. We give God praise. And we give God praise for the eulogist, Minister Terrell Pitt out of Adams. Amen. So we're going to move on in the program. The family has designed the program. Remember, don't bother them. Come to me and I'll tell you no. <laughs> so we're going to move on. We're going to have uh, a musical selection by, two, by the singers people I've ever heard on this side of Rocky Mountain. I'll say it like that. Yeah, and we're going to have a uh, musical selection by the Lewis sisters, and then we're going to have our Old and New Testament scripture reading. Our Old Testament scripture reading will be by Pastor Linwood Barrett, and the New Testament scripture will be by Overseer Father Peterson. And then we're going to have the prayer of comfort by Pastor Ronnie Bridges. In that order, they are going to come. Amen. Let's give God praise one more time.
blood relief, but my family is a part of that family. Amen. Amen. We, we love you guys, and we just love you guys. And today, I'm going to be okay? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. I'm going to read from Psalm 27. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemy and my father, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fail. Though a host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, and this will I be confident. This is the thing that we celebrate today. One thing I have desired, uh, that I will seek the Lord, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. Yeah. In the secret of the tabernacle, shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Family, Church say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah again. Hallelujah. Oh, we're here for a celebration. Amen. Amen. For a celebration. Amen. I am want to get my little marks out right quick. Uh, because I just got introduced to mama a few months ago. And fell in love. your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. Mm -hmm. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am there ye may be also and whether I go yet know and the way yet know Thomas said unto him Lord we know not whether the doors and how can we know the way Jesus said unto him I am the way the truth and the life. No man, let me say it again, no man coming unto the Father but by me. John 14, 1 through 6. To the family, I love y'all. Some I never met. I still love you. Love you, God. God bless you. Other than in you, Lord. 
And so, Lord God, we pray that you give us that peace that surpass all understanding. Lord God, we pray that you, Lord God, trade out this morning for joy. Only you can. Lord God, and I know that if we had our way, if the family had their way, Lord God, we'll keep our loved ones forever. But Lord God, I'm glad that you did provide a way that if we want to be with them forever, we can be. And that is through and by Jesus Christ. Lord God, you have provided the way. You have provided the roadmap and the blueprint. And we say thank you. In the midst of all of this, Lord, sometimes when things are going all right, we can praise you. When things seem to be happening our way and having sunshiny days, Lord God, we can say thank you. But it's in the midst of this kind of trial, Lord God, what I believe praise is the most authentic. And Lord God, I just thank you right now and give you the honor and the glory and the praise. Lord God, right now, I know that the family, Lord God, even feeling a loss, still can be occupied. Because Lord God, now as Miss Loretta has finished her course here, now we got to finish ours. And Lord God, we pray that you would give us the guidance to be able to live like you want us to. So Lord God, we can meet her again. I believe according to your word, Jesus, you're going to come. And you're going to come in the sky. Lord God, you're going to blow a trump with the sound of an archangel. And Lord God, I believe, Lord God, that the dead in Christ will rise first. And those of us who are remain and that remain in you and that remain in the faith, I believe we should be called up to meet you in the air and there remain with you forever. Uh, Lord God, why don't you keep us? Lord God, I pray that you touch this family. I pray that you touch them with peace. There may be somebody that feel like there was some unfinished business. There may be somebody, Lord God, that's caught in turmoil, feel like it's something they didn't do or something they didn't say. I pray for peace over that person, Lord God, that they won't worry about stuff they don't need to be worried about no more. I pray, Lord God, there'll be no argument fussing over nothing that don't need no, need no difference and make no importance. I pray, Lord God, that only joy and peace will come in this time and hour of need. Lord, we love you right now. And we thank you right now. And we praise you right now. You are the source of all things. In Jesus' name we can pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
related. She's my dear cousin. So I had something on my heart that I wanted to uh, say. And it is this, especially to the family. We have lost our dear Loretta. And our last visit makes me weep when I think about it. I know, dear family, that she rests in the bosom of God, and yet I cannot help but feel the pains of sorrow and regret. I cannot help but feel the heavy hand of death in my soul. I cannot help but see the dim, sad shadows of bygone days when we smile before the face of the sun. Where is she now? Is she somewhere in an unknown region? Does she remember the past as we do? Is she near this world of ours, or is she far, far away? I know, dear family, that she lives. She lives with a life more real, more beautiful than ours. She is closer to God than we are. The veil of seven folds is no longer hanging between her eyes and the truth. She no longer plays hide and seek with the spirit. I feel this, beloved family. And yet, I cannot help but feel the pains of sorrow and regret. Our dear Loretta now exists in a new time, a new place, a new reality. And so do we. The relationship as we know it has been transformed from the physical to the spiritual. It has not ended. It has changed. We must allow ourselves to grieve, to release negative thoughts and emotion that makes it easier to accept the change. Remember this. She is closer to God than we are. May God bless us with the strength to endure with sincere love and sympathy. Naeem K. Akbar, a loving family member. She was Gigi, and other people had other names for her, but she was my Nana. And she did not allow anyone to call her Nana but me. And I remember one day, the Girl tried to call her Nana, and she put something on her. <laughs> not your Nana. 
<laughs> but she was my nana. And let me tell you something about my nana. My nana loved orange sodas. And I did not go over there without an orange soda. And it got so bad to, they told me, don't bring any more orange sodas over to the house. And so, it's my last orange soda with my nana. That's my soul with my life. Amen. Sister Gladys Don is going to come and she's going to give us our obituary and acknowledgement.
Loretta and Darcy, we recommend you to him. He knows best and will always be right. We have our sincere prayers. Whereas Mrs. Loretta and Darcy, the reverend and faithful lady who loved the Lord and her church family, a very independent person who would perform any task and be still in her family, follow her loved her family with a gentle yet stern combination which only she possessed. Be it resolved that we bow in humble submission to him who never would make the mistake and remind the family to be encouraged by remembering this story. When I must leave you for a little while, please do not grieve and shed wide your sorrows to be with you, but start out bravely with a gallant smile. And for my sake and for my name, live on in all things the same. Be not your loneliness on this day, but feel each waking hour as a new day. Reach out your Thank you. 
to thank the people behind the scenes. There are some people behind the scenes that uh, you may not see. I want to thank for Let's give God praise for the musician. Let's give God praise for the Let's give God praise for the singing members. And let me say to all of you on behalf of the family of Loretta Young Garden, thank you all for being so supportive to this family. Thank you, family, for allowing me to come to serve you all today. My task is almost over. Uh, I want to share this with you. There was a man that had two sons. Uh, one son was a good son. He was good and very obedient to his father. But the second son was an evil, mischievous son. And he did every mischievous, evil thing that he could think of doing. And so the father wanted to honor the good son, so he bought him a very beautiful, precious gift that was wrapped in a beautiful box. It was a beautiful box, and that one loved that gift. He loved that gift, and he kept it under his bed. And his evil brother was jealous of him. And his evil brother would be peeping while he playing with his gift and watch him put it back under his bed. Though so one day that evil brother decided, I'm going to steal that gift. That evil brother peeped at his brother, put it under there. When the brother left, he went there and he stole the gift. Good brother came back one day and he discovered my gift is gone. And he said to his father, my gift is gone. And the father said, don't worry about it because while he was watching you, I was watching him. <laughs> and the father said, what I did was I took the gift out of the box and put the box back under the bed and the only thing he stole was a box. <laughs> I said that to say that Loretta was a very beautiful, precious gift to us. And she was in a box called a body. And some of us love this box. We make sure we get the hair done, we get the nails done, we get our bald head shine. We love the box. But, but on February 26th, when death came, death didn't steal Loretta, it only stole the box. And when I walked in that hospital room Sunday, I saw laying in that bed. I didn't see Loretta. I just saw the box. And so when you go out of you, don't say that's Loretta. That's just the box. That's just the box. Loretta's here. I'm going to say that again because y'all didn't give it in the back. I said, Loretta is here. unto us and on February 26 he came back and he retrieved the gift that he loaned to us and all we got left now is simply an empty box the next force you will hear by way of speaking 
by way of sharing words of comfort would be that of her sassy. They were sassy to each other. So the next voice you will hear would be none other than Minister Terrell Adams by way of speaking. Digga Johnny Gray is going to come. He's going to render a selection. I got. Some, I have something for you, leader preachers and devil. I got something for y'all. Um, in 2008, uh, Sister Deaconess Cloud Grant and a couple of our deacons, deaconess are here. They sponsored a fundraiser called the Golden Pearls. And your mother was crowned the queen of the Golden Pearl. My mother was one of the runner-ups, but your mother was crowned the queen of the Golden Pearls. And I was rambling through my things and I found that article and I printed that article. I got a copy of that article for you all. So make sure that you get a copy of that article. Please receive with me the music ministry of Deacon Johnny Gray. Amen. Amen. But you can't find 
Shia. So I'm not worried about where she is right now. Because she knew. She already had what we got to get. I will be all right then. Sassy is all right, Lita. How many of you going to be all right? safe travels. Hopefully they are back. I know they were back in North Carolina, so hopefully they're back home. I honor every minister, pastor, and I definitely honor my great friend who has definitely made it so much better. Who terrorized me as a child, but Lord knows I, Let me do this. Let me give you your flowers. I have learned so much from you. From the times that you used to come back home before you moved back home and do the revivals, I took in when we was at St. Paul, I took in. So I do want to let you know and give you your flowers. I have learned from you. So, and thank you for taking care of me on today. God bless you. And to this wonderful family who I, I used to tell all the time, I knew y'all before Anthony did, but then y'all started taking him. But anyway, to this wonderful family, I love you all. Those, I don't know everybody, but those that know me and those that I just met, I met a couple this morning and came into the house, but I do love you and I share in the sadness and our loss, but I'm praying for you all. My aunties and Neil, I love you guys. Y'all know I love y'all. And then the remembrance of my sassy. One of the hardest things I have to do is come and give words of comfort, but as I speak to you, I'm going to speak to myself. Amen. 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 I do have a couple of words of comfort, and I promise, unless God says so, I will not be before you long. So I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures. Word of God says in Matthew 5, ye are the salt, in verse 13, ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Verse 16 says, let your light so shine before men 
that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Before this, Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he's telling them about the Beatitudes. He's letting them know that God, regardless of what you're going to do, you're going to suffer. But he's going to bless you for your suffering. And as Sassy told me the week prior, still count it all joy. Amen. The pain that I'm in, I still count it all joy. So Jesus is reminding, he's telling his disciples, you're going to suffer, but still count it all joy. So then he starts telling them about the salt. You are the salt of the earth. You are the ones who should be making the difference. You are the ones who are no other way around it. Your presence should change the conversations, should change the atmosphere, should remind the ones that are around you, forget about the things that have happened before. You are the ones that's going to change things. That was sassy. Y'all don't already heard that was my name for it. That was who she was. Her laughter. Her love, her attitude, she changed things. Y'all don't know how salt does. I'm not a big salt user now. I might put a little bit in when I'm cooking. Now, y'all know some of you add a little bit more. That's not me, but you put some salt in some food when you get ready to prepare. And you know it changed how it tastes of the, the taste of the food. That was sassy. So God is, Jesus is telling the disciples, that is who you should be. So my words of comfort for this, if family, if that's what you want to aim to be like sassy, you got to change the atmosphere. Then he goes out and says, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. A light can be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bush. Can your light be useful? Jesus told them, let your light show so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Sassy was useful. Remember a powerhouse, when she came into the membership, into the fold, she was a mother, she was a secretary. She made sure anybody that came and joined that church, she got your name, your address, your number. If she couldn't come to you, we made sure, make sure, come here. She's gonna fill out that paper. She was gonna get your contact information. She might can't get up and walk to you at the time, but she was gonna get that information to make sure. And if you didn't come to church, you missed one too many Sundays. She was calling. I didn't even, I didn't even know that. Somebody, one of the members called me one day and told me Mother Rather called me and checked up on me and it made me feel so good. I said she did? Yes, ma'am. And it made me feel so good. And I said, well, to God be the glory. I didn't even know what I had to ask her to do that. She took it upon herself to call, to check up on and see what was going on. And that brought a connection unto Mother Rada and to that particular member. Some of us that can do everything didn't call nobody. <laughs> Grandma Rada couldn't even drive. Well, I can't say she couldn't drive, but she didn't drive. But she could bring people to church. She made sure one of her neighbors got to church every Sunday morning with her. That was a light unto the world. Can our family, family, can we do that? If we want to bring forth her legacy and continue her legacy, we got to do the same thing that Grandma Retta did, that Gigi did, that Sassy did, that Mama did. Come on now, these are words of comfort because this is the woman that that was our matriarch of the family. These are the things that she did if we gonna be like her. We gotta know what she did and the life that she lived and these are the things that she did. 
She was the beacon of light for so many people that said that foster children. These are the things she did in her life, especially throughout. I told you, especially throughout our ministry. These are the things that she did for us at Powerhouse. What are the things she did for you in your lives? What are the things she did? How did she change your life? Let your light so shine before me and that they may see the good works and glory of your Father which is in heaven. I don't have a shadow of a doubt. That's why I say God made everything all right. I'm not worried about a thing. Because when her eyes close for the last time, I know what she went I know what she went Regardless, mm, Regardless of the first part of how her life was lived, the latter part. That latter part of her life. I don't I don't remember my times with Sassy. I can't even remember exactly when, but I got to thinking this morning. I said, God, I thank you. I met Sassy when I was young. I, she was living on Bradley Avenue. Then it was Lloyd Street. These are the times that I met her when I was when I was younger. Then it was Elmhurst Apartments. I don't know if it was the right name, but she was living in Elmhurst Apartments. Then it was Crazy Street. <laughs> then it was Golden Living Center. Then it was Snowden Street. Those are the times that I was able to spend with Grandma Retta. This is what I started out calling her. Then it turned to Sassy. <laughs> and I was always her granddaughter. Then it turned to Sassy. But she, when she joined our church, she called me first lady in front of other people. She respected me for my title. She did respect me for my title. But then she, granddaughter, sassy, first lady, but it was always love. And if we gonna have that legacy of Loretta and young Darden, we got to have that love, that compassion, that hard work, that dedication, that peacefulness, but yet that correction, that reaching out and being who we say we gonna be, not just when we want to be, but every time we have to be. And that's being a God-fearing woman at all times, whether it's right or wrong, but being who God says we should be. Family, I love you. I pray that the comfort words mean something. And knowing that Loretta, if that's what you want to call her, God bless you. Sassy, I'll let y'all call her sassy. <laughs> but knowing that she knew that you loved her, and she did. And knowing that she loved you should bring comfort to each and every one of us. Because she told us whenever we saw her, whenever we got ready to leave from her presence, she told us. And I hope you told her before you got ready to leave from her presence. Because if you didn't, it's too late now. But it's not too late to tell the person beside you. Love while you can. And love hard while you can. Forgive while you can. And forgive hard while you can. Because it's too late when I can't hear you or I can't see you. And then I definitely can't believe it. It's too late. So do, if you want to do like Loretta did, do it now. God bless you, family. I love you with the love of God. The hands are, the services in the hands of the morticians. Be blessed. God bless you. God bless you.
again to all the friends of the family for coming out today to their words of encouragement and support to this family on the passing of Sister Loretta and Young Dart. We thank you. As we prepare for the final viewing, we'd like to remind you that the burial for Sister Darden will follow in the East Lawn Memorial Garden. Reminding those of you who will be processing to the cemetery, please turn your bright lights and flashes for safety. After the burial, the family will receive friends for the repast at Brown's Event Center, located at the Park Hill Mall here in Carver. As we prepare the view, we'd like to uh, remind and ask if you would refrain from greeting the family during the viewing. They'll see you as you pass along, and they'll receive you after the uh, service at the cemetery or at the repast. This time we shall ask the Lewis singers, give them a hand. Have you done great today? Oh, oh, oh. 
on the fall bear separately. Thank you. 